What is it actually like to live in Texas? We'll get into it. Hey folks, Todd Tremonti here with another video on what life in the great state of Texas is actually like. If you haven't seen our other videos on relocation or different cities and communities around Texas, check those out. But today, we're talking about basically the lifestyle in Texas. Now, what is it like to live in Texas is a lot like saying, what is it like to live on Earth? Because there's a lot of different places in Texas as one of the largest states in the United States of America. It is a big place. There are a wide array of communities, cities, counties, ethnicities, and uh, all sorts of socioeconomic groups and terrain. I mean, it's just a really, really diverse state. That's what makes it awesome. So um, specifically, if you, if you want to talk about kind of the lifestyle vibe and feel, most people around our country, and I think probably the world as well, would, would probably say that Texas leans a bit conservative. Now, there's certainly uh, some truth to that, but because of that diversity factor, I think you're, you're, you're going to be pleasantly surprised if that's not necessarily what you're looking for, that there are plenty of communities where that, that's not as true. I always say you can find whatever you're looking for in Texas. Um, and of course, there may be an exception to that. We don't have any, you know, giant snow-capped mountains, but we have the foothills of the Rockies on the west side, and we've got some beautiful terrain in, in, in a couple of areas. Um, Texas is um, a, a place where people tend to be very, very, very proud to live and to be from. And, and, and I'm one of those people. I've lived here um, my entire life. Um, I've gone to college here, grew up here, and I've lived in uh, several different cities in the state, and I've loved every place I've ever lived. But um, if your if you're familiarity with Texas has a lot to do with TV and movies, you're probably picturing a bunch of people riding horses to school and work, and that certainly is not the case pretty much anywhere, but certainly in, um, in the biggest cities in the state. So you've got cities like Houston, Dallas, Fort Worth, Austin, that are some of the biggest cities uh, in the country. Um, and then you've got um, some smaller cities that are still, you know, large enough to really, you know, show up on the map. And El Paso, uh, San Antonio is huge, bigger than, than some of the ones that we've already said. Uh, and then, of course, we've got small towns all over the state, north, south, east, and west. Um, we're, a, we're a state where higher education uh, is one of the places that people get to know us through, through college and uh, college sports and professional sports. Um, but really, all across the state, in every corner, um, we've got wonderful places to live. Uh, speaking back to that kind of conservative lean, uh, there's, a, there's a culture of hunting and fishing where, where guns are respected, but they're also um, typically tolerated, if not really uh, supported. Um, and again, that comes from a heritage of responsible hunting, fishing, things like that, because we've got the land. We still have the land where lots of the United States of America right now are uh, areas of a lot of dense development where, where land is at a premium. Uh, and Texas, we're fortunate to still have quite a bit of open land. Even in cities like Dallas-Fort Worth, where I am, um, where the cities are getting bigger and bigger and bigger, there's still room for them to get even bigger. You know, it wasn't that long ago that uh, Amazon flirted with a headquarters, uh, a second headquarters here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and people kind of asked the question, where will they go? And then many of us just sort of laughed, like there's tons of places for them to go. There's a lot of land here. Houston has been growing in landmass for years and years and years as they annex cities on the outskirts forever. So Houston, as a municipality, is one of the largest cities based on landmass. I think Jacksonville, Florida might be one of the only cities that has, you know, more more actual landmass. And so that's one of those things that people you know, may or may not know. Houston's a big city, but it's a big city mileage-wise. I grew up north of Houston, literally one hour north of downtown Houston, and my address was still Houston. <laughs> so if that doesn't communicate, literally, that's just the northern part of the city. You could drive for an hour, and that was 20-something years ago, uh, and still be in a, a Houston address. Now, um, geographically speaking, and you know, topographically speaking, um, there's not a whole lot of Texas that if you if you grew up, you know, kind of thinking about Texas that you probably viewed as necessarily beautiful, right? It's not the Rocky Mountains, but the hill country in central Texas, 
uh, pretty much everything from San Antonio to Austin and surrounding areas is absolutely beautiful. You've got some really unique country. You've got some rock formations. You've got a lot of that white rock kind of um, chalky, caliche uh, type feel. Uh, and you've got, you know, kind of the beginnings of some mountains there. Uh, you've got some big natural um, water sources, but you've also got some areas that really struggle with um, access to water. So the hill country is beautiful. That kind of might be what you picture if you see somebody coming up on horseback over the hill and, and looking over a region of not a lot of big tall trees, but kind of low ground cover trees, scraggly kind of area, but some real beauty because of the rolling hills and topography. When you get out west, um, there are some super flat areas and there's also some rolling hills as you get into areas kind of like Big Bend and things like that. When you get to the south, you get to more of that kind of, uh, you're, you're obviously getting closer to Mexico and you're getting closer to the border of kind of some desert type feel, but beauty in that you can see for miles and miles and miles. As you get out east, you're getting closer to Arkansas, Louisiana. You're getting into uh, kind of big piney woods type regions where you do have massive, super green pine trees and, and, and significant kind of forest region. Um, if you get up into the panhandle, you are getting into, uh, you know, obviously some clear, you know, four season into some wintery stuff. You're getting a lot of cattle country. So a lot of that's been clear cut or a lot of that is kind of rolling plains um, and, and can typically be flat, 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 almost kind of Kansas feel. Um, and then in, in, in North Texas, uh, where we are here in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, you're you're much closer to Oklahoma as many people think. So weather pattern-wise, we get those high winds. We don't get kind of the hurricane-type weather that you would get in the south where you're uh, bordering the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, and therefore, we have some flat open areas as well. But we get, you know, as you get into kind of northwest Texas, you do get the beginning of that rolling west Texas. And as you get over to the east, you get some of the clay soils and things like that, some of the red clay and get into some sandy soils. So we could talk about all sorts of wild variety all across the state. I grew up in Houston, I went to, which is kind of South Texas. I, I went to college in Waco, which is definitely Central Texas. People call it the heart of Texas. And then I've lived for a long time in Dallas area, which is North Texas. So I've gotten to experience kind of the uh, South, Central and North from, from, a, from the middle of Texas. Uh, traveled a bit out west where it's got a very different feel and traveled quite a bit out east. Um, I've hunted and fished all over most of the state of Texas. So that gives you a feel for kind of what is here. But back to that lifestyle feel. Um, I think if you grew up in New York City, you might say that lifestyle in Texas is a little bit, quote, slower. That's probably not so true where I have lived in Houston and Dallas. These are big metropolitan cities that make a dent internationally, uh, where there's tremendous amount of commerce, whether it's oil and gas or banking or technology. You know, we've got major sports. These are cities where there's a tremendous amount of opportunity and there's a lot of activity. Now, if you grew up in a smaller town in some of the outer lying areas outside of these big cities, then you might see a little bit more of that stereotypical Texas from the from the TV shows and the movies. But please don't underestimate Texas as a sleepy, slow, you know, lagging community. There's there's a tremendous amount of uh, of, of skill and intellect and, and innovation and opportunity in this incredible state. But there's also everything in between, itty bitty towns that you might drive through with a population sign in the hundreds to massive cities like Houston and Dallas that are in the top list of populations across the world. Um, you know, we mentioned education a little bit. You know, there's higher education. You, most people have heard of the University of Texas or Texas A&M. There's growing private schools like Texas Christian University, Southern Methodist University, and Baylor University, who all at least had originally roots in faith. Some have grown more away from that than others, but that ties you to kind of that Texan conservative lean. Some of them have gone more um, kind of mainstream, larger than others. And, and, you know, some people have preferences in that. But just to give you the information, um, you know, some of those schools now have 30, 40,000 students. So it's not like they're these sleepy little Bible schools, while at the same time, we do have some of those as well. 
Um, there are areas kind of in uh, eastern Texas like uh, Nacogdoches, which is kind of getting really close over towards Louisiana, where there's schools like Stephen F. Austin that might not be quite as well known on a national level, but occasionally they'll crop up and beat a big Division One school like you know Stephen F. Austin beat Duke in basketball not that long ago. That, so they they crop up on the map and they become well known for something like that. Um, but all over the great state of Texas, you've got wonderful things to explore. Um, over in the hill country, you've got cities like Fredericksburg, which are really, really well known for a wonderful kind of weekend getaway, bachelorette party, uh, family getaways. That's kind of Texas wine country a little bit too. Um, there is, uh, in that hill country region, enough kind of climate shift there as far as um, there's some cool breeze and cool weather, but that hot Texas uh, summer is, not, is unavoidable pretty much anywhere. So there's a different type of grape and wine that can be grown there. But there's some sweet wines coming out of that region that have actually done really well on a national level. East Texas is working on becoming a respectable wine region as well. There's some neat things happening there. Grapevine um, on kind of the northwest, uh, north central area of the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex is literally named for the grape vines. Uh, has a really wonderful downtown area. We've actually done a video on that. You can check that out. Uh, where there's some wineries um, that are really, really fun to do kind of some wine tours of. And then outside of that uh, kind of uh, downtown area are the vineyards. So some cool stuff there as well. But you may not have ever thought of Texas as a, as a wine community. The Hill Country uh, doing pretty well with wine lately. Um, grapevine, a little pocket that's that's kind of neat for wineries and and vineyards, and then East Texas really growing uh, in a in a presence for um, vineyards and wineries as well. Um, I happen to be into garden and orchard stuff, so um, there are some grapes that can be grown in a home garden in our area. Muscadine's a little bit more popular than some of the wines you might have be more familiar with, like a Chardonnay or a Cabernet or a Pinot or something like that. But um, Texas has a wide array of um, what you would call USDA zones, right? Gardening zones, climate zones based on what you can grow, right? So the northern parts of the state are kind of zone seven. Central parts get into eight, and then you can get all the way into nine and, and some almost tropical stuff when you get way down into south Texas near Mexico where you can grow citrus and palm and things like that. So... It's a wonderful place to live. Texas whiskey is exploding. Hey, Texas whiskey, cameraman, producer Mason, and several of our team members are whiskey enthusiasts. And so the Hill Country is also pretty solid on uh, some distilleries. Uh, we've got some vodkas that are really well known from Central Texas. And we've got some whiskeys that are really well known. We just talked about wines. Um, I know you've got some favorite whiskeys. You want to throw any of them out? I may, uh, may shoot a video at a later. Yeah, I'll tell you what. We'll flip the camera, and I will just push a button and hope that it focuses right, and we'll let some of our guys do some whiskey videos. We've done some favorite whiskey videos on the channel before, but maybe we'll talk a little bit more about the whole state um, and do some cool stuff there. You know, uh, microbreweries and small batch beer stuff has become bigger and bigger and bigger in Texas. DFW is pretty strong right now, I think, as far as I know. Um, in that community, Deep Ellum is an area here in the Dallas area, but Addison's becoming really popular as well. And there's some other pockets, even right here in Richardson, where we are, has got some really cool stuff. Um, as a whole, Texas, wonderful place to raise a family. I mean, I'd like pick a city. There's, there's a family culture here. Um, I don't know the exact data, but I would, I would assume, and I, I'm pretty sure I've read some stuff in the past where... You know, Texas is a place where family size is encouraged. It's a little bit larger. People tend to have a few more kids. There's space. Uh, it's encouraged. It's a wonderful family-oriented culture. Again, from everything from Little League sports to church and recreation to schools, it's a wonderful place to raise a family. It's a safe place, you know, overall, wonderfully safe community. Um, you know, so much of what is done in, in Texas is focused on the family, is focused on kiddos, is focused on um, safety and security and education and um, being a place that you would want to, to uh, start a family and keep a family. Uh, as far as opportunity goes, as far as that keeping a family piece, um, you know, again, educational opportunities all over the place, private schools, public schools, uh, upper education, higher education, advanced degrees, um, high-skilled labor. You've got a tech corridor here in North Texas. You've got a tech corridor 
booming in, in central Texas. You've got Houston just exploding with opportunity in oil and gas, as well as a few other major industries, refinery, things like that. Shipping, uh, uh, some of the ports on uh, the, the Gulf Coast have really done well with um, vacation. Uh, cruise lines really exploding in Galveston right now is a big one. Uh, Corpus Christi, Port Natchez, places like that for uh, fishing and vacation and beaches. And uh, we've got some wonderful uh, man-made and, and um, a natural lake or two here in the, in the state as well. Um, so just I could go on and on and on forever. If you've got questions, revisit, drop them in the comments. We will always answer every single question. Um, but I, you know, I would argue that Texas, um, I won't say all things to all people, but I'll say you can find just about whatever you're looking for here in the state of Texas. If you want to find some stuff that would tell you that Texas is a place not to live, you could probably find those. But if you're looking for reasons to move here, this video is just a few of the wonderful reasons that Texas is a phenomenal place to live. So many people that I know and have grown up around or met later in life have said, uh, we will never live anywhere but Texas. And many, many of them grew up here and don't ever want to leave. Many more of them grew up someplace else and moved here and said, I will never leave. There's a reason that thousands of people are moving to Texas in the cities in Texas every single day from other places. We don't need to name the other places, but people are moving here and saying, we've wanted to get here for years. We've been saving to get out of XYZ city or state to get our family here, to be able to find jobs here, to be able to buy housing here, to be able to afford to live someplace, to be able to get more space, to be able to bring our whole family here and live together and on and on and on. So, hope you enjoyed the video. Check out other videos on this channel about specific cities, specific communities, schools, education, communities, and on and on and on. Comment below. We really do read every single one of those. We'll interact with you there. Or if it's a really great idea, maybe we'll shoot another video. Or if you have specific needs, we'll take those offline and deal with those one-on-one. -on -one. Subscribe to our channel. We'll keep making great videos. Hit that little bell. It'll let you know when we make videos that are relevant to you. And of course, if you're ever thinking about buying or selling or investing in a home anywhere in the great state of Texas, we have wonderful relationships with real estate agents, mortgage lenders, brokers, uh, you know, and all sorts of things all over Texas. And we would love to connect you with someone you can trust. And of course, if that's in Dallas, Fort Worth, we'd love to help you ourselves. Our contact information is below. Let us know how we can help. And I will talk to you on the next one. Take care.